Storage Manager is the application within Disk Station Manager that allows us to configure the drives installed in a Synology NAS. Through Storage Manager, we'll be able to set up storage pools and configure volumes, both of which are required before we can start saving files on the NAS. In this video, I'll go over creating a storage pool and volume. I'll go over the benefits of Synology's Hybrid RAID, or SHR, Synology's Automated RAID Management System. Lastly, I'll talk about the BTRFS file system and the advanced features it provides. If you are following along in the Synology NAS installation and local area network setup series, setting up a storage pool and volume with Storage Manager is the second step to go through in the seven video series. Continuing from where we left off in the last video, you should still be logged on to Disk Station Manager. If not, please log in with the administrator account that was just created. The first thing we need to do is create a storage pool, which lets us aggregate our drives into a single unit, allowing us to take advantage of RAID or redundant array of inexpensive or independent disks if our NAS supports it. RAID helps add a level of data redundancy performance improvement, or both, depending on how we set things up. To begin, we need to bring up Storage Manager, which is accessible from the main menu. When the Storage Manager window appears, click on Storage Pool, then click on Create. This will start up the Storage Pool Creation Wizard, allowing us to choose between the options of better performance or higher flexibility. Because I'm more interested in setting up a redundant pool using Synology Hybrid RAID, I'll select Higher Flexibility and click Next. In this window, make sure the RAID type is set to SHR and click Next. Here we'll see the drives that are available for us to use. In my case, I have two drives and I'll leave both checked to set up a redundant pool and click Next. We'll get this warning message that all data on the drives will be erased and that's fine, so I'll click on OK. Next, we'll be given the option to have our drives checked for bad sectors and have any bad sectors remapped. This is a good step to take, so I'll keep Yes selected and click Next. Finally, we just need to confirm the settings we've selected, and if all looks good, click on Apply. We are now back at Storage Manager, where we are presented with this window, letting us know that we need to create a volume before we can start using the space on the new storage pool. Here, I'll just click on OK. We'll get to setting up a volume shortly. Before creating a volume, I'd like to talk about Synology Hybrid RAID, or SHR. I recommend using SHR because it simplifies managing a RAID setup. It takes the guesswork out of selecting a specific RAID configuration, and it will dynamically manage redundancy and storage capacity depending on what level of SHR is configured and the number of drives that are available. It provides better storage utilization as compared to other RAID implementations. To learn more about Synology Hybrid RAID, visit Synology's website as shown on the screen here. I'll leave a link in the description below as well. Let's now get to volumes. A volume is a storage space on our NAS that allows us to create folders and where we'd be storing our files. Volumes are formatted and given a file system and in our case, we'll be using the BTRFS file system, which I'll talk about shortly. Let's create a volume. Here in Storage Manager, click on Volume, and then click on Create. Because we've already created a storage pool, the only option we have is Custom, so I'll just click on Next. Again, because we've already created a storage pool, the Choose an Existing Storage Pool option is the only one available, so I'll click Next. Here, the storage pool we created earlier is already selected, so I'll click Next. We have the option to choose between BTRFS or EXT4 for the file system, and as mentioned earlier, I'm selecting BTRFS for its advanced features like snapshots and replication, so I'll leave BTRFS selected and click Next. Here, I'm going to allocate the available capacity of the pool to the volume and click Next. Finally, we just need to confirm the settings and click Apply. Now we are set and ready to start storing files on our Synology NAS. The last item I want to cover is the BTRFS file system 
and the advantages of using it. With BTRFS, you gain the benefits of file self-healing to protect against data corruption and snapshots, which are point-in-time copies of folders allowing for easy file restoration in the case of accidental deletion or file corruption. BTRFS is also efficient in the use of drive space and allows for data consistency when doing backups. Learn more about BTRFS from the link shown here, which I'll also link in the description below. We're now done setting up a storage pool and volume with Storage Manager. And we're now ready to move on to assigning a static IP address to our Synology NAS, which is the third video in the Synology NAS installation and local area network setup series. Look for the link to that video and all other videos in the series in the description below, which I'll be adding as they become available. I hope this video was helpful and informative, and if it was, please make sure to like it. Also, please subscribe if you like this type of content.